don't know, but it looks fancy. And it's eight and a half by 11. Does it open flat? Maybe. Hey guys, I'm Kathy McGivern and I'm Ms. Artastic and I'm going to talk about having a sketchbook program in your classroom. Oh yeah, so there's a whole bunch of ways to do sketchbooks. I've seen it done and as visual journals. I've seen it done where teachers have kids actually physically craft and bookbind their own sketchbooks. I saw that especially when I went to Emily Carr, so if you're in high school that might be an idea. Um, and I've seen sketchbooks done really as a strict program where the teacher has a lot of input in exactly how kids are doing things. I've seen them done more loose where it's more student choice based. Now, I believe in my own personal opinion that sketchbooks present an opportunity for kids to experiment and be creative, critical thinkers, and really find their own artistic voice. That being said, I think a lot of sketchbook work should be choice based, both in what they draw and how they illustrate it and in the style that they're going to draw um, without a lot of teacher input on that, but also in terms of the materials they are choosing for using in their sketchbooks. I think that needs to be choice based. So if you're looking for an opportunity to have more choice based work in your classroom, I highly suggest to use a sketchbook program in your classroom. As well, sketchbooks provide an opportunity for you to have either a bell ringer or like morning work um, or start of classroom work or warm up work in your classroom, whatever. It's all interchangeable terms, but if you're looking for like a great warm up, um, sketchbooking is that opportunity. So you don't have to go and try to recreate a different program that are like the warm up, like part of the day, right? You don't have to go find warm up task cards or any of that. You could just use your sketchbook program as an opportunity. And it can also be the when you're done activity in your classroom. So in between projects, if kids are done a project and then they're like, oh, I'm bored or whatever, or they're looking for something new to do, they should be working in their sketchbooks, okay? So sketchbook program, I highly suggest you do it. Again, I believe in having a lot of choice based work that being said, I do provide guides. And by guides, I mean I, I teach and instruct the start of the sketchbook, how to use your sketchbook, what materials to use in your sketchbook. And by that, I mean I present a range of ideas so that they can see that the there is no one answer, right? Because we are making art and there is no one way to make art. You can see that things that are my own personal style. Well, there's a sculpture hiding behind here. But anyways, my sculptures and my paintings, this is in progress, <laughs> are more, much more different than things I create for as art lessons or decor uh, for Ms. Artastic, okay? Um, and my style of creating is going to be different from everyone else's and that is the way it should be. We're not making cookie cutter art lessons. Mm -mm. So, sketchbook program, I highly recommend it and you can do it for elementary, middle and high school, especially for those upper grades. So before I talk about a sketchbook program and how to start it, um, introducing it to your kids, walking them through, uh, discovering themselves and then providing sketchbook prompt programs in your classroom, I want to talk about just sketchbooks in general. So I already have just a few sketchbooks lying around in my studio. You can pick whatever you want for your classroom. So I've taught at a range of different schools. I've taught K to 12 over my career. Um, and I've taught in places where kids were able to go uh, buy sketchbooks. I've taught in places where sketchbooks has came as part of the supplies in the classroom as budgeted. I've also taught in places where there was no budget really or mediums and materials um, and parents I couldn't be expected to buy sketchbooks. So if I'm going to talk about sketchbooks, I'm also going to talk about alternatives to sketchbooks if that's not something that's an option. So first we're going to talk about sketchbooks. This is 
just your traditional hardcover um, sketchbook. I like it for my personal use. Now you can get coil bound ones that are also eight and a half by 11. Um, I, I use that commonly when I was in, when I was in high school, <laughs> so a long time ago, but I find that they didn't last. So when I look back at my old sketchbooks, for me, I've noticed the coiling has come undone. And it could be because I just shoved it in my backpack or whatever, I don't know. But I find, I person I like for me, as the artist, I like hardcover. That being said, it's expensive, <laughs> more expensive. Um, but uh, either way, hardcover or coil bound, you're gonna get a similar um, style of art. The paper inside is the same is what I'm saying. All right, so this is my own personal one. Um, works good in pencil, right? I've been, and also I've been doing like watercolor doodles in it. So um, as you can see, it has not gone through, which is amazing. This is not like an expensive, but honestly, I think this is eight bucks on sale. So um, that's great. This one's an Opus hardcover. Um, I'm not really gonna tell you guys where to go buy <laughs> your your art projects um, or your, sorry, your sketchbooks because I live in Canada. So it's gonna be different <laughs> for you. Okay, so this is just like an eight and a half by 11. I think that's the best size for no matter what. No matter what brand, quality, whatever, it is the perfect size in my opinion. Again, you can disagree with me. Um, this is just a smaller one. It's again, um, it's hardcover. I think, honestly, I think this is from the dollar store. I'm pretty sure this is a Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I got this at the Dollar Tree at some point and I bought it because I was like, sketchbook at the Dollar Tree? Look at all these pages and I think I ended up just using it for notes and ideas for Ms. Artastic. So there's not actually like, they're like mini doodles in here. Mini doodles, okay? More brainstorming stuff, but I could easily jot down my ideas but as I was going. Did pretty good like it's lasted so check out the Dollar Tree sometimes you get some good finds and like I don't think this is a great size for elementary or middle school but maybe for high school and you can do it in more of a different way be creative like maybe it's like personal like if you're doing like an AP class or a portfolio class like maybe it's like their personal like identity journey or whatever okay this one is a nice book. <laughs> I haven't used it yet, but I'm excited. Um, it says it opens flat. Ooh, it <laughs> opens flat. Uh, it's huge. Um, it's in French and it says made in Canada. I don't know who makes it, Heinz, Jordan and Co. I don't know, but it looks fancy. And it's eight and a half by 11. Does it open flat? Maybe. I guess so, it does. I guess if you press down, it's flat. So that's cool, right? Because if you look, it's flat. Flat, I guess that's what they mean by flat. Oh yeah. So that's cool, I haven't used it yet. Um, it's really big, so I think I'm gonna be using this one for like later on. But I think this might be too big. So something like that is way too big for kids, I think, to use in the year. Compare it with something, again, my cat shoot on this one look for something that's smaller. Not too small, because then you're running out of space, but this is nice. Um, it's just a different style of an art book, sketchbook. All right, um, then they got your coil bound. This one's a mixed media one. Um, it's for my personal use. I, it's not um, sketchbook paper quality, but just your normal Canson. I think this one's from Walmart. Obviously get the typical sketchbook one. I wanted this kind of paper for Artastic stuff and this size so that's why but it's a sketchbook and you can get the idea So this is what I'm talking about the quail bound um, probably Just get the I think the normal sketchbook one. Well, anyways, it'll just say drawing paper or something like that That's probably good enough for anything. That's like elementary middle school even high school depending on the age um, and then, yeah, it opens flat, <laughs> I guess. But um, great for using it for student artwork. Uh, sometimes you can see that in the 
coil bound ones. They have tearaway lines. So if you want, and kids end up wanting to use this for like a portfolio or an art show or whatever, it's easy to take out without having all the lines or the little cutouts for the coil, right? So it's just another opportunity. Uh, really, it's up to teacher or teacher choice if you're allowed to have that. I don't recommend hauling sketchbooks home and stuff like that. I honestly did that during my practicum when I did high school. I don't know. I guess I didn't have keys or could stay long at school when I did my practicum and I honestly carried home sketchbooks. That was crazy. So I don't recommend that. Um, but I would think about how you can put sketchbook marking or assessment and build it into your day or like as routine so it's not something that's like crazy. I do remember like back when I was in high school, um, even in university, teachers only mark sketchbooks once in a while. So, and that's kind of my thing too, um, for anything that's like an ongoing project, like I don't mark it every single time and I don't even mark it for everything. So one thing I did do is when I was doing like intensive sketchbook programs, I would say to students like, pick 10 things that are your best that you want me to mark. So I'm not marking the whole sketchbook. Um, I marked the 10 things that they wanted to, wanted me to mark, they had to put sticky notes on the 10 things. Um, I think that was the same for my university. One of my profs did that as well, which is where I got that idea from. And then also I gave the opportunity is if there was something they just didn't want me to see, they could just take a piece of paper and then put a paper clip on the page and cover it up. And um, I promised I did, wouldn't look and I didn't. Like that was a respect thing. So they didn't feel like, like sometimes we like to use our sketchbooks for like own personal explorations and things. And I wanted kids to feel like they could do that beyond just sketchbook assignments only. Like, I wanted them to use sketchbooks like not just for assignments. Like I wanted them to explore, have or feel like they could explore on their own time as well. So I just said, if there's something that you don't want me to see, it's personal, you don't want me to look at it, just put a piece of paper on it and paper clip it on the page and I promise I won't look and I didn't. And that was really successful. Most of the time there wasn't anything, but some kids did choose that option and I just thought that it just gave them that opportunity to kind of be a young adult be expressive, but also make it a safe place in your art classroom. All right, so those are sketchbooks, and I wanna talk a little bit about having a sketchbook program. So for me, I have three sketchbook programs. I have a high school sketchbook program, a middle school sketchbook program, and an elementary sketchbook program. So um, I keep all my sketchbook programs, I like to print them out and keep them in a binder, but I also keep them as a digital file. You can find all my sketchbook programs in my Teachers Pay Teachers store in the sketchbook category. You can find the links below in the description if you want to check them out. I'm going to show you them now so you can use them as kind of like a brainstorm for your own classroom and kind of see what I do. So this is just my, this is my high school one printed out. Um, my middle school and elementary ones are all digital as I like to, I prefer most things that I project it on my, um, projector in my classroom. Okay, so I like to project most things and I'll just open up the PDF and then just um, enlarge it so kids can see the pages that I want and I'll scroll through and then close the um, digital projector slider when I don't want them to see certain pages or go ahead. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I do got some <laughs> middle school pages, but anyways, so you can check out. Um, I also have a rubric, so it'll also come with a rubric and just a grading sheet so you can always just like, you can see, you can easily like cut it out and stick that. So I got a rubric and I got the grading sheet here. But you can stick this in your, or cut it out, right? Um, there's four to a page and then stick it at the back of their sketchbook or at the front. If you don't wanna glue it in, just like paper clip it or something or just maybe even a staple so they can tear it out. That's always an option. I always talk about how to start a sketchbook, so I'll go over that. And then every single one of my lessons is going to have an example. So this is the beginning. As you can tell, it's probably backwards in the video, and I'm sorry. And I'll go through a just a screen scroll in a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna show the whole thing in this binder. It's really hard to show you, <laughs> and you probably can't 
can't see it very well, but I have a title page um, example of what kids can do and a prompt for a title page. So this one for high school is illustrate what your imagination looks like. It gives criteria. There's an example on the page. I'll talk about for this is for our teacher page, but just talking about interactive student pages. And then these are the interactive student pages. So you could choose to include them in your sketchbook program or not. This one is the sketchbook rules. Um, you think kids go cut it out and they can stick that as like their second page in their book if you're choosing to use that. But basically some of the rules I think are important are using your sketchbook. So in order to grow, learn and develop technique and your creative thinking, you need to use your sketchbook. So basically rule one is like, use your sketchbook. Um, number two is add everything to your sketchbook. So your sketchbook needs to feel like a friend. Eventually your sketchbook will be not only a portfolio of your drawings, but also of your life and who you are. Next, I gotta rotate this. I'm not that strong to hold this binder. <laughs> Next is to treat your sketchbook with respect. So that's one of my big rules is just treating it with respect. So hold it kindly. Don't rip out your pages. If you make mistakes, turn those pages into something new, collage over it glue on all the receipts of your latest purchase, put your sketchbook where it will be safe, okay? So just being respectful to sketchbooks. Number four, bring your sketchbook to class is a huge, huge um, important thing. Now, if somebody forgets a sketchbook like twice in the term or year, that's fine. So um, take your time, go slow, and produce high quality work. That's number five. And number six is be creative, so letting your imagination um, run free. And number seven is experiment with new mediums and materials, try new things, and take risks. So those are kind of like my basic sketchbook rules. Um, some other just interactive pages before we get into the prompts would be like mediums and materials, what mediums and materials the kids can use. I talk about what the creative process is, so finding inspiration, brainstorming the idea, um, talking it out and then creating, image development strategies, artist goals, personal interests in art, likes and dislikes, which is kind of pages that are interactive that are going to allow kids to just have like a, a vault of brainstorm ideas or a vault of ideas that they can go and reference you know, in the future, if they run out of ideas, uh, thing, themes they want to pursue, techniques I wish to learn, artists I'm inspired by, especially if they're like looking on Instagram or whatever for some cool artists, they can write their names here. Um, that in addition to art history. And then freestyle doodling, wrap this page. I love it, right? Photo clip prompt. Uh, a, a reflection, so the beginning of my sketchbook reflection, middle of my sketchbook reflection, and end. And then it goes into the 30 sketchbook prompts. So this is just the sample page. Um, every single one is going to come with a full size page prompt that you can project or um, print out and have hanging in your classroom as you, the, for the one that you're working on. And it also comes with a page that has four little cutouts that kids can glue into their sketchbooks. So you don't have to label sketchbooks. It's already good to go. Um, I'll show how to use it. So um, lots of different options for how to use the prompts and how to glue them in. And then you get 30 prompts. So this is both for your high school program, the middle school program, and the elementary school program. So every single one is going to come with a full page prompt and four cutouts. Okay, so these are the glue in ones for kids sketchbooks. So you can project this page or you can um, just have it hanging in your classroom. And then these are the, going to be the ones that kids will glue either onto the back of a page, so the opposing page. So for instance, this is their sketchbook, okay? This is the back of a page, right? So they worked on this page previously. So the back is usually yucky and crinkly. Sometimes things bleed through. So you can glue on a prompt on this side, make a new piece on the fresh side, okay? That's kind of my way I use it. 
And then I have 30 prompts. So everyone is a full illustrated example and you get 30 prompts all fully illustrated. Okay, and I've done this for high school, middle school, and elementary. Obviously, um, I've leveled them to the, the prompts and just the illustrations are all suited for those age groups. Okay, I've also included like what element of art or principle of design is targeting on here as well. So you'll see that in bold. But yeah, just 30 sketchbook prompts. Use them as your warm ups. Use them as your when you're done in your classroom. Use it as your sketchbook program. For me, I love doing the sketchbooks. Um, sketchbook routine as the first in uh, 10 minutes of a high school or middle school class. The first 10, 15 minutes, because the classes were longer, was dedicated to sketchbook work. Um, and the kids, uh, I would just, I would ask them to be just silently sketching. I would turn on some like mindful, uh, peaceful meditation music and dim the lights, and they would just draw and work on their sketchbooks. So that was kind of like how I introduced it into my classroom. Magnification, we got distortion, hashtag selfie, expressive crowd, culture, how I see the world, masked, oh yeah. So yeah, there's 30 sketchbook prompts. Um, so that one is the high school one. I keep mine in a binder. So uh, let's take a look at what the middle school sketchbook one looks like and the elementary school again you can find all the links to these resources in my teachers pay teachers store the link will be in the description of this video or if you're an artastic collective member and you're an art teacher you've joined the artastic collective find all programs in the sketchbook section of your membership okay let's check out the middle school sketchbook program. So this is the middle school sketchbook. So it starts off with a nice little unit plan and a lesson plan for you. Um, just so you don't have any planning. You got a sketchbook rubric, grading pages, how to start the sketchbook. So a little lesson for the kids. Um, a title page that's specific for the middle school um, age group. And then you got your interactive student pages so it starts off with the sketchbook rules and all of these can be glued into the sketchbooks and you can pick and choose uh, which ones you want to use or use them all it's really up to you it talks about the creative process and artist wishes this one is about me the artist dreams and nightmares ideas to pursue and remember all these pages are perfect to use as an idea vault um, for each kid so they can keep all their different ideas um, recorded on here and then they can always use them as reference material later on in their art journeys or during the year. Alright so then you get to the 30 sketchbook assignments so these are the poster prompts and glue-ins so there's different just a little example there and then I have two a page that shows you essentially how to use the prompts so two options and then how to use the glue-in prompt on a sketchbook so we have found object crumpled paper and so many more so it always goes big poster and then you get your little glue-in sketchbook prompts so it gives you a lot of flexibility of how you really want to show it in your classroom and of course it has a complete example for every single one just to show your students as they create their works and of course they're going to make it their own and use their own choice ideas materials and everything
All right, so that is the middle school sketchbook unit. All right, next is the elementary. So you got your unit plan. You have a lesson plan. You have the elementary sketchbook rubric, grading sheet. Then you have your lesson plan title, or sorry, your lesson title page for elementary. And then elementary version, interactive pages. So hopes and dreams, four of my favorite things. First I like, second I like, enjoy for mediums that they like to use, ideas they want to explore, what they want to learn, what makes you happy, stick person central, wreck this page, elementary version, photo clip prompt with the little ducklings there just to start them off, reflections, and then you get the 30 sketchbook assignments for the elementary one. So these are 30 different ones from the high school and middle school ones, of course. So it really gives you, if you have all three, you could have three different programs at three different levels in your school. All right, so you have your options of gluing them in and then ooh, I'm going the wrong way. And here we go. So we got cute fruit, animal within, fear, an emoji, design an emoji, pencil box discovery. So drawing something in your pencil box, designing an alien spaceship and so many more. the end of this episode thank you for joining me and learning a little bit more about sketchbooks and my sketchbook programs and kind of how I implement them in my classrooms um, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel I greatly would appreciate that it just really uh, helps me continue this YouTube channel journey as well as I love to hear your ideas for sketchbooks down in the comments section below tell me what do you do in your classroom with sketchbooks how do you use them? Uh, when do your students work on them? I want to know. So write that down in the comments section and make sure you share this video with our teachers you know. I'm Kathleen McGivern. Subscribe to this channel and let's make some art. I'm Ms. Artastic and that's the end of this episode. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and for more art lessons, 100 exclusive art lessons, make sure that you check out my course, 100 Cartoons for Kids. The link is in the description of this video and it's 100 exclusive drawing tutorials, premium drawing tutorials for kids. You can use it as a course for at home if you're a kid. You can follow along with any medium or if you're a teacher, you can use it as your directed drawing program in your classroom for obviously an entire year because you have 100 drawing videos to choose from for your classroom. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video and comment with ideas for things that you want me to draw in future drawing tutorials. I'm always open for ideas, so comment with things that you want me to draw and let's make some art.